My background and interest in spirituality and science really is a lifelong passion because I started as a young child being very aware of the fact that there is this deeper level of consciousness connecting all of us. I wanted to find out more about that and get into the science of it. So I chose to go to UC Berkeley where I got my degree in physics and my main focus of interest in the program had to do with quantum physics, which I found tremendously intuitive for me. There has been a lot of emphasis on the, the idea that magical thinking doesn't work, but actually it turns out magical thinking is pretty powerful because in the quantum realm, the realm of imagination is the king. That's the foundation for everything. Consciousness is primary. So some people think this is something weird, and what I'd like people to realize is that Basically, every time we make a choice in our mind, we're actually making a quantum jump. Quantum jumping is such a big field that there's a lot that falls within it. Everything from the placebo effect is, I think, an excellent example of it, to finding lost things, to suddenly having skill sets and abilities where you didn't have those capabilities before. These are all things that are possible. There's really no end in sight. If pretty much anything that you would wish for is attainable because we're looking at the nature of reality itself and the way that you're interacting with it. So the steps involved, so how do you get a quantum jump from being in one state of being, um, maybe being sick to being well, for example, that's a good one. Uh, the way that you can make that jump is to start by getting into that relaxed, energized state of being. So things that are conducive to that would be meditation, lucid dreaming. You can think of that as being in a theta state of mind. It's like a daydream state of mind. And just make that a regular part of your life so that you feel like, okay, this is how it feels to just not have any worries and feel energized and relaxed. Now, the more you do it, also it gets easier, so that's good. Then the next step is to really feel that you're making a selection of where you'd like to go. Sometimes we don't know where we want to go. I like to then ask, how good can it get, and let that unfold naturally. You're talking to your subconscious when you do that. Your subconscious knows what's good. You will go to the right place. And so that's a natural way to guide yourself. But if you have a clear view, I want to get healthy, then you can have that picture in mind. To the degree your subconscious believes that's possible, that dictates the degree of success you're about to have. So I recommend keep an open mind, you know, read lots of stories and accounts of miracles, these magical happenings, these reality shifts. Third part is just act as if it already happened and you behave accordingly. And it sounds crazy, but people experience what they're able to experience based on the energy they bring, what their subconscious really needs, because your subconscious is in the driver's seat here. And what you really believe and what you need is what you're going to end up getting pretty much all the time. When you need it to happen, it will happen. And when you're open-minded and you've brought that energy, this is basically the science of miracles. So it's not just a matter of telling yourself once a day, I can do this and lots of people like me succeed at this. You're going to need to address the issues of your heart and of your subconscious and your gut, all of that. And the best way to do that is to start listening to yourself. A lot of people don't do that. They think, I'm just going to tell myself what to do and it's all going to work. It seems simple to do a quantum jump, but that doesn't mean it's easy. And I, I do martial arts and they say the same thing there. You know, some of these things are simple, they're not necessarily easy. And with quantum jumping, there's so much involved, starting with this whole notion of attaining a relaxed, energized state. And often when people are suffering, when there's true misery, when they're actually engaged with survival issues and uh, real difficult challenges, then it might be very difficult to get to that place of feeling relaxed and energized. And then the next step of envisioning something positive can be equally challenging if your entire history has been based on nothing good really happening. If you don't know what love is, for example, it's hard to picture what that feels like. If you don't know unconditional support and compassion, it's hard to imagine it. There can be all kinds of challenges along the way. It's still doable, but that needs to be a discipline of working in that direction. 
So the main thing I recommend is people start by meditating. If you go on a walk and you're in nature, that's a perfect time to just pay attention to your breathing as you're walking. It's all about getting back to an observer state of being where you notice that you're not the problems in your life, you're not the role that you play, you're not the thoughts that you think, you're the observer of that. So you're the one who is making the choice in all these things and you have a lot more choice than you thought you did. I pick up expectations and fears and doubts and misgivings about things that have happened and if I let that clog up my entire cognitive system then pretty soon all of my decisions are being based on my fears, my doubts. So meditation helps me clear out those beliefs that get in the way. They, it's just like clogging things up, just like you need to vacuum your house and clean your refrigerator. and You need to clean your mind. When we recognize that every single material thing at its core is energy and everything is vibrating, then you can get a feeling for this nature of existence that is not as materially real as we tend to think. And to me, that's what it's really about, that the nature of reality itself is consciousness looking at itself. It's basically a feedback loop. <laughs> so we're looking at the outside world, realizing, wait a minute, maybe what we're seeing is consciousness itself. And it starts to seem that is the case. So we're at a time in our history where quantum physics is challenging all of us to take a whole new look at the way we see the world. It's a challenge to face up to a lot of opposition. Collectively, there's a driving force that tends to move events in a certain direction. And if you've ever gone up against it, it can feel like a fish swimming upstream. <laughs> like you're going one direction and everyone else is going somewhere else. The more you go into this practice of meditation and the more you recognize that you are consciousness, I would not say it becomes easy, but it becomes possible to stand up to society to your parents or your internalization of what you think your parents want for you. <laughs> and the funny thing about doing this quantum jumping is often you'll notice that people seem like they change and where there had been opposition, now there's support. For me, enlightenment is to attain that sense of self that is pure consciousness and to recognize that, that that's the real you, that who you are is infinite, is eternal, is connected and that that's the you that's looking out through your eyes who is so much wiser, so much more connected, so much more involved in everything. And that's your true identity.